time for another episode of the Music Business Radio Behind the Scenes Podcast. David Hooper here. Today was a fantastic show at Music Business Radio HQ, the Tuned In Broadcasting Studios in Nashville, Tennessee. It's one of those shows that I was really sorry we only had one hour for. This guy made my job so easy. I, I had prepped, looking at everything that he had done, and, well... Didn't get to half the prep because we just kept coming up with story after story. Even after the fact, we uh, had had some great stuff about a tribute record he's working on now. And he was dropping names. Michael McDonald was one of them. And, and Michael has been, I've seen him around town here, here in Nashville. And I'm, I'm hoping we can, when this album is done, when uh, my guest, when his new book is out, which is December, he's going to come back and maybe bring Michael and some of these other people that are involved in this, this record. So, Norbert Putnam is his name. He's a record producer. He's a musician. So are a lot of people that I interview. But he has a huge impact and contribution to the history of music. He's performed and is credited on over 10,000 records. And by that, I mean songs. Did a lot of sessions. Let me tell you what uh, didn't make the show. This is really exciting. He talked about starting out. He would cut four songs in three hours, and that was with two 10-minute breaks because that was the union. So uh, imagine that, four songs in three hours. That's how good this guy was. So Norbert Putnam, he was with the Muscle Shoals Rhythm Section. But let me tell you who he's played bass for. Elvis Presley did 122 tracks with him. Roy Orbison, Al Hurt, Henry Mancini, Linda Ronstadt, J.J. Cale, Tony Joe White, the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band, but something that he has done that I, I didn't mention and we found out during the show, this is amazing. He was the producer of Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville. Jimmy Buffett, Forbes just released, I guess it's a list, we'll call it, of the very richest people in the United States. Jimmy Buffett was something like maybe number 17, $400 million, that's what he's worth. And Margaritaville is really... I mean, Norbert Putnam started this whole thing because the song Margaritaville, which came in in the very last two days of this session that they were doing, and it is what has caused all this. When you think about Margaritaville, we looked it up before the show, and it's like Margaritaville blenders, and there's, of course, a restaurant we've got one here in Nashville. I know there's one in Las Vegas. I think there's one in Times Square. So anyway, as a producer, Jimmy Buffett, Joan Baez, Dan Fogelberg, Donovan, J.J. Kale, the Flying Burrito Brothers, had a great story. This is funny. About Michael Jackson, which I'll just have to let you hear the show, working with Michael Jackson at Quad in Nashville, Tennessee, which is a studio. You might know it. It's on South Street, still here. And it's at the, I guess, the middle of Music Row on, on South Street, right off of 17th Avenue probably the corner of 18th and South Street. Anyway, started out at Muscle Shoals Rhythm Section at Fame Studios. He was 19 years old. We talked about the typical day. He opened up for the Beatles, if you can believe that, in 1964. Talked about doing that and the kind of response he got and what they had to do to get him on and off the stage. He said he was on a boxing ring in the middle of, a, like I guess, like a basketball stadium in Washington, D.C., and what that was about. Talked about his move to Nashville, why he came to Nashville, his first time meeting Elvis, the charisma of Elvis, hanging out with Elvis, eating lunch with him. It was a fantastic story. Talked about working with Chris Christopherson, Joan Baez being hired by Clive Davis to produce for Columbia Records. Talked about, well, really, how a guy can do 10,000 records over a period of time. If you've heard Please Come to Boston for the springtime, then... uh, Poke Salad Annie played bass on that. There's just so much, so much this guy did. Uh, Dan Fogelberg, he did his debut called Home Free, and that was actually a funny story talking about working with Clive Davis, about working with Dan Fogelberg and having like maybe seven people, then 12 people, then 14 people at a gig, then all all of a sudden 2,000 people at a gig. And uh, a funny story regarding Irving Azoff, which was Dan's, manager and you certainly know that name he's the manager of the eagles he's done a lot of stuff still around actually in the music business one of the kind of old school record men just like clive davis you know i could go on and on about what we talked about on this episode but i really just don't do the stories justice but all the names that i just dropped here elvis we talked about jimmy buffett joan baez dan fogelberg 
really, really good stories. And Norbert was such a gentleman. We hung out beforehand. We hung out afterwards. And I've just got some great stories. I don't want to ruin it for you, though. But if you listen to, to one episode, if you just love stories, even if you're not in the music business, this is one to check out. We're editing it. He's got a brand new book. It's called Music Lessons, which has even more of these stories in it. Cool guy. It's going to be that kind of feeling. I know that I had it today where you're just hanging out with him. So check it out. It's Music Lessons by Norbert Putnam. Put it in your calendar. I think it's coming out the first week of December. So we'll have him on the episode here that we edit very, very shortly. We're going to have him back when the book comes out because we just didn't have enough time over 50 years in the music business to get all of his stories in one hour. So if you're curious what working with a 13-year-old Michael Jackson is like when Michael Jackson is actually mixing the record, this is the episode for you. It's Music Business Radio, the episode with Norbert Putnam. And if you're listening online, the best way for you to get this is at Music Business Radio. Dot com. Thank you very much. I'll be back for another behind the scenes podcast next time I'm in the studio for Music Business Radio.